Uh, you got challenges that you're going to run across. Because I remember in the 80s, uh, 70s and 80s, where you had uh, different genre of music. And I liked it all. MTV age, you know what I'm saying? You had that music. You had, uh, you know, R&B, uh, the jazz. You had all kind of stuff. And, I, you know, I'm a music guy, so I loved all of it. But, like, probably middle, middle of the 80s, early 80s you know um music hip started changing a little bit hip-hop came in and you know you start hearing stuff like uh what was the what was the number one hip-hop song that hippity hop what was that uh rapper's delight yeah rapper's delight. Delight. Oh, man everybody knew every lyric from that i remember that uh you know houdini came out with five minutes of funk and and you start hearing all these ll came in with you know with all the songs he came in with, and hip hop started sliding in, and it seems like hip hop just moved everything out of the way almost. I mean, it just pushed a lot of stuff out of the way, and this whole country became almost hip hop or taking, uh, you know, lyrics from hip hop or taking the image that hip hop put out. What do you think about hip hop, and what do you think it does for? Um, our race or how it has it helped has it hurt you know because it changes the music has changed the hip-hop has changed now so how do you feel about that sure you know uh it's a deep topic uh one in which it, it pulled a lot of young brown brown and black folks out of poverty i can say that for hip-hop uh nothing fuels ambition creativity motivation like a dope track i mean uh it's fueled a level of entrepreneurship like you can't imagine in, in the urban community. So um, yeah, hip hop has been utilized as the fuel to a lot of people's engines. And uh, I think it's a phenomenal thing. In fact, uh, you know, you start talking about MTV and, 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 and VH1 and all this, when they allowed hip hop on the scene, it changed not just music culture, but it changed culture. Uh, and that was a powerful thing. What do I mean by that? People used to love a good R and B song. Right. They love some good Luther Vandross, some good Whitney Houston. However, you don't sell a lot of Cadillac trucks singing love songs. You don't sell a lot of Nike Air Jordans singing love songs. Hip hop came in and became a marketing message. It became a marketing uh, concept like no one had ever seen before. You know, uh, you get one of these rappers standing on a microphone in front of 20,000 people talking about Pastor Cavassier. Person may not even be a Cavassier drinker, but they want to go and find out what is he talking about. Uh, so that's what happened. Hip hop, hip hop came in and kind of replaced and displaced a lot, of, uh, a lot of other genres because you could use it as a marketing message and generate a lot of money from it. So that's a that's the good piece of it. The bad side of it is, yeah, uh, we just talked about our words being powerful, and if we're putting out or spewing a lot of negative and, and you know, let's be let's be, be frank. Hip hop is really the only genre of music that puts down people the way it does and use some of the terminology that it does. Um, so. We, so, yeah, it, it's used to, to fuel creativity, to drive businesses, to drive entrepreneurship, uh, to help people want to be successful. But we got to do a better job of channeling the energy. And that's what I think we don't do. We we put the words together. We put it out into the atmosphere. Words have power. We're not channeling that energy to where it's going to help our people to be better people, uh, to be better uh, 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 spokespeople, better family members, things of that nature. So hip hop, I think, is a two sided sword, one that has a lot of benefit and one that has a deep downside as well. Um, and to this point, we just haven't found a way to channel that that energy into um, making it the, the best that it can be. Now, we are seeing some of the artists are starting to change the way they, they drop their messages. You know, Jay-Z, who's one of the senior spokespeople now, uh, uh, you know, I think 12, 12 platinum albums, uh, all platinum albums, his lyrics are starting to become a little bit more grown man, a little bit more mature, a little bit more family-based, a little bit more about how can I help you understand what credit can do for you in, in life uh, as opposed to buying another $60,000 car. So I think some folks are starting to understand that their voice can be used a different way to empower the next generation. Whereas a lot of folks, you know, depending on their background or depending on what influences them are using the music as something that uh, is a negative and it's and it still hurting the community. Do you think some of that 
was uh, intentional? I know you've heard the story of people saying that they got together in 1993. I don't have any facts on that, but you know, one of the rappers said that and he felt like there was a meeting that started directing negativity in the songs, you know, because it was so powerful, the things that we were hearing before, and then they started kind of changing. Do you think that that was um, a concept that was planned and put together uh, by allowing us to, because at one point you can even curse. And now it's like you could, you could do that uh, on the radio airwaves. And now you can say almost anything you want to say, because, you know, it's free speech. I think Luke was the one you give credit to for that. Uh, and I believe in that also, but, um, but if it's a plan or is it, is it a concept that was put together by the opposition to get us to go the wrong way, then I, I got challenges with that. But I don't know, you know, because you hear people say all the time, they don't have to say that. They can say, uh, I mean, but is it, you know, I heard MC Light say this. This was this was in the late 80s and 90s, early 90s, she said. She said, you know, I gave y'all a great album. You know, it was uh, speaking about success and helping people and said, I wouldn't buy it. She said, but I came out with Gotta Get a Rough Neck and all this other stuff, it sold off the shelf. She said, so, I mean, do you think that that stuff has been heavily promoted to make them sell it, to make them people buy, make us buy it? Or is it that the world just want to hear that kind of stuff? I don't, I don't I'm really kind of torn, you know, in that because I know the media feeds us a lot of garbage these days from crime and, you know, and all kind of stuff over the airwaves. Uh, but I just, I just really would really hate it. I don't, I mean, I can't say hate, but I, if that concept was put together and it's been directing us and guiding us by the powers to be, I would really, really feel like we need to kind of figure out how to stop that. Or is that just us being who we are? Yeah, I, I think it's a little bit of both. I think the industry that uh, that we're talking about was formulated by individuals who uh, didn't look like us, but found a way to profit off of us. And uh, one thing they understood was that this 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 sex crime violence that it sells, um, and they they didn't really want to have to figure out another formula. Hey, give it to us raw and funky, and guess what? We're gonna sell out. We're gonna sell a lot of a lot of albums, and when we sell a lot of albums. Everybody gets paid. That's the name of the game. Nobody was really wanting to um, to experiment. Say, hey, look, if you come out and say some conscious stuff, uh, will that sell? They didn't care. Man, say what you got to say to your community and let us get these record sales up. And I think that's where uh, the formula was was generated. And to this day, it's worked and it's still working. And then, quite frankly, uh, you know, the media has a formula on what sells and, and, and what makes good story, what makes for good news. Uh, you know, they say, uh, 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 you know, a dog bites man is not news. Man bites dog. Now that's news. So they they got a formula for how they want this to to work, and that they want they want the John Gotti effect. They want the 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 the, the drug seller, the drug dealer, big pimp, and uh, diamond rings, flash. And that's why you know you see when these rappers come out, hit the platinum chains, and they got the rings. And if they don't have that, you you, you wonder. Are they successful? Are they poor? Are they are they renting these cars? What, you know, it, it's they're they're creating a persona of us that says these people are successful, and guess what? You can be successful too. And if you're a thug, if you follow along in these uh, same footprints, you can get you a Lamborghini truck, and you can get you this and a nice big car and big house. When the facts are, that's not usually the way it happens. A lot of that uh, equipment is rented. A lot of those cars are rented. And, um, you know, that's that's what we're leading our people into. But uh, a lot more people want to hear somebody come out and talk about, you know, slanging keys and making big money versus, you know, setting up a reputable business and maybe making smaller money. You know, it, it's just it's it's the story that that sells. And we learn from stories. That's how, that's how they started us off in, uh, uh, you know, when we were in kindergarten and, and uh, nursery school. Stories, stories, stories. That's what they're feeding us. More stories and, and watch the, the, the revenue and the in the income pile up. You know, this subject, man, we need to come back to one day and have a like a little panel where we can talk about this because I believe, you know, it's so much in that. You know, uh it's probably a lot more that you want to say. 
um, that, you know, that we all need to talk about because, man, and I don't know how much that's going to help, but at least getting those thoughts out for people, because some people don't even, they only think one way. They're not thinking another way. Um, let me ask you a couple of questions. We're going to wrap it up. The last one is, uh, well, two more. Uh, and then I got a few mental toughness questions I want to ask you. All right. So make sure that you like and subscribe and, and hit the all button and all that kind of stuff, because we're going to have a lot of good interviews uh, on this podcast.